In this video, I'm going to show you the most efficient, non-destructive and most importantly, an awesome way to dodge and burn your flat photos and bring them to life. If you want to relight your landscapes, if you want to enhance and bring back the details from highlights and shadows, if you want to add depth and dimension to your images, this is the video for you. As complex it may sound guys, dodging and burning is really simple. What is dodging and burning? Well, dodging and burning is nothing but brightening and darkening certain parts of your photos and that's it. Dodging is brightening and burning is darkening. Okay, what happens to an object when you burn it? It blackens, right? It becomes blackish. So that way you remember, dodging is brightening, burning is darkening. Alright, now it serves two important purposes. One adding depth and dimension. This is the main goal of dodging and burning and what does it mean? Let's have a look at this image. Alright, now what is this image of? Now this is a flat circle, right? This doesn't have more than two colors. Background we have white color and the circle we have gray color. That's it. it it's totally flat. Now, what if I tell you, what if I brighten up this area and darken up this area? What will happen? Let's see. Watch. This adds dimension to the same circle. All we did was brightened up some areas and darkened some areas. That's pretty much it. Now this is not 2D anymore. This is not flat anymore. It's a shape. This is a sphere. In layman's concept, it makes 2D-ish objects 3D-ish. And if an object is already 3D-ish, it makes it 4D-ish. Though the fourth dimension is time and that's not the topic of this tutorial. Let's move on to the second purpose. The second purpose that dodge and burn serves is that it allows you to recover details from highlights and shadows. Suppose certain parts of the images are too bright or too dark that it barely has any details. Suppose it's very bright, you burn that area and bring back the details. Suppose it's very dark, it, you dodge that area and bring back the details. So that's pretty much the purpose. I'm very excited about this class and tutorial. So without any further ado, let's start it, shall we? <laughs> So here we are in Photoshop. So the first thing that you need to do is to open the image as simple as that. Guys, Photoshop is very simple. You guys complicate it. All right. So the second step is make a 50% gray layer. Complicating. All right. We'll get to that. So press and hold control, shift and N. Okay. If you're using a Mac, it's command shift N. This creates a new layer. All right. If you don't want to press that shortcut, you can always go to layer new. Layer. All right. Look at the shortcut. Shift Control N. The same thing, right? Use the shortcut. It will boost your workflow. Okay. Control Shift N. Command Shift N. If you're using a Mac, then name this layer. All right. In the name section, you just have to type Burn. Okay. And you can give any name, but just to identify that you're using this layer to burn your photo, just name it Burn. Makes your life so much more easier. All right. Mode. Change this to Overlay. And make sure you check fill with overlay neutral color 50% gray. Okay, check this and click OK. As you can see, there's a gray layer, but you cannot see the gray anywhere. This layer, although this layer is above the main layer, you cannot see the gray. Why? Because the blending mode is overlay. Okay, and if I change the blending mode back to normal, you can see the gray thing. Now, why is it going away? Why is the gray going away? If you have watched my previous tutorial on blending modes, you would already know that the blending mode overlay removes everything which is exactly 50% gray, brightens everything which is white, darkens everything which is black. All right, so let's move back to overlay. And now, as I said, overlay brightens white color. That means if I paint over with white here, it will brighten those areas in the underlying layer. All right. But we don't want it. We want to bring back the clouds here. So what do we do? We take the brush and the name of the layer is burn. And we will only use this layer to darken up areas, not to brighten up areas. Okay. So take the brush, make sure on the foreground color, you have black. Okay. And on the background color, remember on the background color, you have to have 50% gray. Now, what is the hex code for 50% gray? 808080. Okay. 808080. You can also remember it by red 128G, green 128, blue 128. All right. Click OK. On the background, on the color, we have gray, neutral gray. On the foreground, we have black. Why so? We'll get to that in a minute. All right. So paint over the clouds with black. Make sure the flow is somewhere around 30, 40 ish. So whatever you feel the flow should be. Now, what is flow? Think of flow like this. If the flow is low, say flow is 10. 
Then you need to paint 10 times to get a particular effect and if the flow is 100, you have to paint one time to get the same effect. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Alright, awesome. So keep the flow somewhere around low-ish and start painting over the clouds. Alright, as you already begin to see that we are getting some details, awesome details. Alright, make sure you are smoothly painting it, make sure you have a soft brush. To make the brush bigger or smaller, press and hold Alt or Option, right mouse button and drag it to the right to make it bigger and drag it to the left to make it smaller. Alright, like this, like that. Drag it upwards to make it soft and downwards to make it hard. Alright, so once you've painted it, watch what we have done. This is the before, this is the after. Isn't this amazing? Alright, now here's a problem here. As you can see, I have accidentally painted a little bit over this kind of surface. I don't know what it's called. Just help me in the comments below. Alright, I don't know what it's called. I'm bad with my uh, vocabulary vocabulary all right so if you have gone overboard or extra thing all you have to do press x watch this press x now see the color changes the background color becomes the foreground color and the foreground color becomes the background color now if you paint with gray it goes away why because overlay deletes everything which is 50 percent gray so that's why we had two colors so that anytime we did a mistake we can always switch back using the key X okay X switches them all right so if you want to paint more paint with black if you did a mistake press X and paint over the mistaken areas so there you go all right so the next thing that we need to do we need to brighten up some areas to add dimension and awesomeness to our photos all right to do that create a new layer again control shift and command shift and if you're using a Mac command shift N, and then name it dodge okay do the same thing, mode overlay, and check the fill with overlay neutral color, click OK. Alright, so suppose you want to brighten a little part of the surface, I still don't know what it's called. This time you need to set the foreground color to white, and the background color still has to be neutral gray. Alright, so foreground color, click on it, select white, OK, amazing. Now paint over the areas that you want to brighten, and the flow is 24, that's fine, if you, if you want you can increase it, alright. There you go. All right, if you want to brighten certain areas, you want to brighten this area. There you go. All right, let's look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. We have brightened up that particular area. If you want to group these two layers, press and hold control and click on the second layer. Select both the layers and press control G. Command G if you're using a Mac and this groups both of them up. So, so let's look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Isn't that amazing? Now if you think the effect is too much, you can always go ahead and decrease the opacity. Alright? Opacity is our all-time friend and it will always be. Alright, so uh, let's move on to our next example. And our next example is somewhat interesting. If you want to relight your photos, this is the method, this is your way to go. Alright, if you want to relight this, this image as you can see is flat. First of all it's flat, but the biggest problem here, it's already bright. And we want to relight it. So, we want to make it dark first and then brighten certain areas. To do that, add an adjustment layer of exposure. Okay? Add exposure and decrease the exposure a bit. Maybe to this extent, that's fine. Maybe minus one, Let's see how it looks, minus 1.4. It's pretty good, all right. We can always tweak it because this is an adjustment layer and completely non-destructive. All right, so now let's create a new layer in the similar manner in which we created in the previous example. So, Control shift in dodge, all right, burn first. No, we don't need burn here because we are just brightening up certain areas. So, just dodge, B dodge, just let's, all right. So, mode, overlay, fill with overlay neutral color, click OK. Alright, now, think of it like this, brighten up the areas which would normally be brightened if there was a beautiful, brilliant diagonal light to it. Alright, so let's start brightening up areas. Alright, see, the magic is already being added to this. Isn't this looking awesome? I'm gonna fasten up the process so that you guys don't get bored and also have the idea of what I'm actually doing. Alright, so let's do this. Let's fast forward in 3, 2, 1. Let's do it. Talk 
So there you go, I've done a little bit of relighting. So let's look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. And you know, we as humans have a compulsion to go overboard and we always tend to overdo things, right? So if we need to just lower it down just a little bit, maybe a little to this extent. This looks more natural and looks really nice, all right? So look, let's look at the before, this is the after. You can always play with the exposure if you want, you wanna make it a little brighter. There you go, so before, after. Let's look at the Overall, before and after, before, after. Much more dreamy, much more amazing. All right, you can spend hours and hours doing this. And if you're an artist, especially, you have the knowledge of light and shade. Use that knowledge into this and you'll just rock the stadium. All right, let's move on to the next example. And in this example, we'll take things to a whole another level. You will just love it. In this example, as you can see, I took this picture in Hyderabad. And the problem with this picture is you cannot say the picture is bright. You can neither say the picture is dark. It's just that the balance is wrong. We are, this, his shirt is very bright and the monument is very dark. So we need to re-lighten it. But this is gonna be different. This is gonna be amazing. We're gonna add dramatic lightning effect in this one. Though the beginning is going to be similar, but the end will amaze you. All right, so we're gonna do the same steps. Control Shift N, burn, all right? So mode, overlay, fill with overlay neutral color. Oh, all right, so let's do the burn first. Let's take black and let's try darkening up his shirt. Oops, okay. So there you go, a little bit of spine. It's, it's pretty good, awesome. I don't think we need too much of burning in this one. It's already a bit darkish. All right, let's do the next step. Control Shift N. Dodge, and this is where the mystery and the fun begins. <gasps> Mode overlay, fill with overlay neutral color, and now meticulously, tenaciously, graciously paint the areas that are that should have been bright. If there was an awesome light throwing from the sides or from the bottom or from wherever you want, it's you. You relight the area. You relight your image. Decision is yours. You decide where the light is coming from. Okay. Just make sure it's not totally opposite of where the light is originally coming from in the actual image, right? So first thing that we need to do, his face is a bit darkened, so we need to we need to brighten it, okay? So, the, oh, foreground color, make sure it's white, all right? Now, let's paint over his face, the brighter areas of his face. There you go. There you go. Now this is looking a little fade-ish, but wait, just wait till the last effect. All right, last step. All right, let's just paint with the brighter areas to add dimension. A little bit here, a little bit here. Maybe a little here. There you go. Awesome, amazing. Now, Time to add brightness to the monument, to the temple. I just forgot the name of the temple, I don't remember it. But, ah, all right, so let's add. This area is bright, light is coming from the right hand side, so we need to brighten the right area. Okay, let's do that. And let's just fasten up the process so that you guys don't get bored. All right, so let's fasten up the process in three, two, one, right now. Come, come. Also, just came to my mind, I just wanted you guys to know that brightness also affects the attention. Say, you want to drag the attention of the viewer to a specific area. Brighten that area. You will directly look in that area. Also, in, in this example, as you can see, if you want to drag the attention, draw the attention of the viewer to him, his shirt is already white. But also what you can do, you can brighten up the floor around the areas where he's sleeping. Okay? So that draws the attention even more. So keep that in mind, okay? And we are, I think we are pretty much done with the dodging and now we have to do the special and the final effects, okay? So let me just add a few more strokes before we do that. Okay, so there you go. I've done a pretty rough job. You can take your time to do this in the most detailed way possible. So this is before, this is after. This does look good, but this does not look magnificent and phenomenal. Why? Because if you zoom in, have a look, the areas that are already dark, 
the air, listen to what's this, the areas that are already dark, we are brightening up those areas by mistake. And hence, we are losing contrast and making this image a little bit fade-ish. We want to remove dodging from the areas that are super dark. Because if you dodge the areas that are super dark, you just fade the images. And to do that, our old friend Blendif will come to rescue. Right click on this and go to blending options and blending options dialog box will appear. Now watch. Drag the slider from the left and watch what magic will happen. Watch. Woo! You watch this, watch this. What's happening is, as I'm dragging the left slider of the underlying layer to the right, dodging effect is vanishing from the areas that are dark in the underlying layer, which is the main background layer. Okay? Okay, so to this extent, fine. Now, press and hold Alt, click one more, once more on it to make the transition a little smoother. There you go. This adds more dimension. A little more. Okay, let's click OK. Let's look at the before. Oops. Click OK. Let's look at the before and after. So this is the before. This is the after. If you want to double up the effect, make a copy of it. And I think, I, I know this is too much, right? So let's add a little bit of it. And there you go. You might want to adjust the blending option just a little bit. Okay. Now let's make a copy of this one. Let's discard this one and decrease the opacity. Increase it accordingly. And there you go. Let's look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Isn't this amazing? Dramatic lightning effect. And guys, I've roughly done it. You can always go detailed over these things. But this is the main idea of adding dramatic lightning effect. Isn't this magnificent? And if it's not, I've done a really poor job of dodging things, all right? So that pretty much wraps up the session about dodging and burning. And I know you guys are wondering, why didn't you teach us about skin dodging and burning? The thing is, this method will not work on skin. You see, skin is stone sensitive because, okay, now you're thinking, I have applied dodging and burning to his skin. Guys, this is black and white. I'm talking about colored skin. If you apply the same effect on a colored skin, what, what's going to happen is you're going to see color shifts. The skin might become yellowish, it might become reddish, and you don't want that. For skin dodging and burning, there's a different method which cannot be applied in this kind of dodging and burning. So if you really want to know how to dodge and burn skin, you can wait one month for my tutorial or maybe a week. Or right now if you want to know, watch this video by Flern. This is really amazing on dodging and burning. I learned dodging and burning from this one. Also, I have some other inputs from other books and sources that I look into. But for now, go ahead and check out his tutorial if you really want to learn skin dodging and burning. He is really brilliant. I insist you do. So I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned. And thanks a lot for watching. Make sure that you keep creating.